Welcome back, Mr. Jones. Good evening, Mary Council. I wasn't able to be here on 19 October 2010, but this is my chance to talk to you about Mark. Struggle and shut out. Those are the words that come to mind when I look back on my experience of almost six years of engagement with the city of Vancouver over the future of Northway. Engagement. All of this has felt like nothing but one military encounter after another. Here's something Ivan Drury said at the 633 Main Street rezoning on February the 27th. Although there are zero low-income residents that I know of that support this development, there are also zero who want it to come tonight. I was going to say the same. A few people have come out. This rezoning of Norquay may be the single largest land grab in modern Vancouver history. Contained within our boundaries is about half a square mile, about 1,900 separate residential land parcels. <coughs> this land grab stands in a direct line with the exploitation practiced by Vancouver colonists in the 19th century. All take, no give. City data provided to the first Northway Working Group categorized 32% of our 2001 population as low-income families. Call that one-third. Remember how promoters once talked about a one-third, one-third, one-third mix for housing in the Olympic Village? The June 2007 Northway draft plan failed because it contained a survey form. The community responded with a strong no. Then the city stonewalled access to those embarrassing results for over half a year. The city has never again carried out that kind of quantifiable survey anywhere. Here's what that 2000 draft plan said right out in the open. Question, how much will the housing cost? Answer. New units are always more expensive than older ones of a similar type and size. A city planner also told us that the intent of the mass rezoning was to double the rate of redevelopment. We all know what gets redeveloped first, and who disappears, and who moves in. Only one word needed, gentrification. <coughs> in August 2009, you shut down the Norquay Working Group and disregarded the plan that the group had developed. In November 2009, after three and a half years of process, you deleted one-fifth to one-quarter of the Norquay area from the plan. In October 2010, you sprang a last-minute Kingsway height increase of 25 to 33% and an FSR increase of almost 20%. In November 2010, you approved a mass rezoning despite majority opposition. In February 2011, you unilaterally terminated the Norquay Working Group. For two years now, the Norquay community has been openly shut out of all planning. That kind of active suffering has moved elsewhere, especially to Mount Pleasant, the downtown east side, and the west end. The Norquay experiences so far with capital planning, with distribution of CAC, with realization of local public improvement, with glimpses of supposed planning for amenities and benefits, all of these convince us that the only real interest of the city is to maximize profit margins for developers. I don't know how politicians ever dare to talk about social needs because it always targets only the bottom of the social scale because it is nothing but a program for displacing and disappearing the least powerful. I think the imposition of the Norway plan is, for me, what the arrival of settlers was for the slave tooth, must win and squash people. All take, 
and no give. Thank you.